<clears throat> Great. Well, again, thanks for joining. We're going to be looking at some uh, home movies. And do we have anybody that's new with us for the, for the first time who would like to say hi and introduce themselves? Well, if anybody's new, they're being shy. What I'm going to say is a variety of home videos. We're going to go in chronological order. We're going to start with the 1939-1940 uh, Golden Gate International Exposition. Uh, then we're going to jump to uh, 1960, 1956, rather, for some very early footage of Disneyland when it was less than a year old. Then we'll hop over to the 64, 65 World's Fair and uh, do two videos from there. And then uh, we'll end up with... Uh, uh, Disney World in 1975. So uh, hmm. we're going to see a whole bunch of different things with different quality. Uh, it's it's interesting how like the, uh, the the 39 footage is actually pretty interesting. Uh, for the folks that aren't totally familiar with it, the Golden Gate International Exposition was built out on a man-made island out in the the, the San Francisco Bay. Uh, the footage we're going to see runs about five minutes, uh, and it's about a from about a twelve minute reel that I, I took out the uh, the other parts of it. Uh, didn't have time to restore them all, but the guy was evidently very enamored of their new Golden Gate Bridge because he would drive across the Golden Gate Bridge, and then he would drive across the Golden Gate Bridge. Then he would go to, like down the uh, Fisherman's uh, Grotto. I mean, uh, Fisherman's Wharf, and. Uh, I, I, I don't remember who had the restaurant. Was it Joe DiMaggio? I think had a restaurant there with his name on it. Anyway, some sports guy. And then he go back across the Golden Gate Bridge, and then he and then so he made two separate visits to uh, Treasure Island to uh, go see the, uh, the fair. Let me pull that up and get ready for it. And uh, I took the two of them and uh, put them together. Okay, let me share video or share screen here. Share. Okay. There's no uh, audio in this particular one, but we're going to start uh, with, uh, <laughs> let's see, please move this window away. Let me just make this larger. The ferry system is a, a ferry called the Key Ferries. It was a main way that a lot of people got to uh, the fairground. And this is uh, coming off the dock at the ferry dock, going over to the main entrance into the ferry. You could also drive out there and park your car. Uh, but uh, the ferries were very cheap and had a, a great way of getting people out there. And you can see how many people are going in. There's one of the little roller chairs. Those guys in the uniforms are trying to hawk that they'll give you a guided push tour around. This fountain, uh, let me just stop it real quick. It, it, he goes and jumps all over. Go back real quick. This fountain uh, was a, a major fountain with these pieces of work, uh, art around it. And uh, after the fair, it when, when the fair ended, the grounds were all uh, taken over by the U.S. Navy. It was supposed to be an airport, and the U.S. Navy took it over because of World War II. The fountain stayed there all throughout the Navy years, and uh, it was kind of strange because they removed almost everything else connected with the fair. Uh, a lot of the, the fountain finally got to the point it was so uh, deteriorated they had to take it out. But a lot of these figures are in storage, and some of them are outside the uh, administration building that was built for the airport. So it's kind of neat that you can still go out there and, and touch something that was actually there for the, uh, the fair. Hmm. Hey, Bill. Bill. Okay. So uh, we're going around the fairgrounds. People all dressed up. You see ladies in fur coats and mink stoles and everything. But uh, this was all man-made four years earlier than this uh, picture was taken. These people would have been out in the middle of the bay walking in the water. Very popular uh, tenants for Sally Rand's Dude Ranch, which was also Sally Rand's Dude Ranch. Mm -hmm. Various states had exhibits. And again, people dressed very differently than they would for a trip to Disneyland to, uh, today, didn't they? Ah, that's working better now. You could go and nobody on the either. swan boat out in the lagoon out there. Uh, and uh, the Pacific House on the left celebrating the various Pacific nations, Japan in the background. He's built in Japan, brought over here. Oh, let me just pause this for a second. This pavilion was built in Japan, uh, uh, taken apart, brought back over here, reassembled. And after the fair, uh, it had to be removed because they had not paid uh, taxes on it. Basically being brought in for a temporary basis, the U.S. government said, we're not going to charge you any tariffs on it. 
but if you uh, leave it here, you're going to have to pay tariffs. So they said, okay, who would like the pavilion for free? All you have to do is pay the, uh, the tariffs, the taxes on it. And uh, nobody stepped up, so the fire department burned it down in a, a training exercise. Wow. You think about wow. what's lost. I mean, you know, if somebody gave you the opportunity that you could take this, because you, you didn't have to leave it on site. Just for the price of the taxes, you could pick it up and move it someplace, you know? <laughs> Of course, it, by that point in time, two years later, there wasn't a lot of love for Japanese, uh, you know, activities. So somebody's sky riding. The guy's camera had an issue uh, with some of the lighting. There's a Goodyear blimp overhead. There it is. Okay. And we're back on the ferry saying goodbye to the fair for this particular visit. Those are called the Elephant Towers. Uh, one of the entrance ways in at a very young guy submitted a design, uh, I think he was 22 or so, and uh, got the design for the uh, entrance and then uh, launched a, quite a career as an architect. A nice way at 22 years old to have something like that built. Well, looking at the bridge on the ferry on the way back over. It's weird to see San Francisco that undeveloped. Yeah. Now we're back for his second visit after three or four trips across the Golden Gate Bridge. This fountain's out behind the main administration building. Getting a bit of a frame rate issue here. Well, you know, I probably, I forgot to say optimize for video. I'm sorry. I'll have to do that in the next one. No problem. Just it's Thank watchable, you. just pretty jerky. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll tell you what. Let me stop share one second. Let me stop the video. That was my fault. Yeah, you, know, you, you don't do this for a couple weeks in a row and you get rusty, right? So share mm -hmm. screen. Optimize for video clip. Okay, share. This should be better. Yeah, well, let's see. Oh yeah, much better. Great. Yeah, this fair, unlike New York, was very industrial type fair with big exhibits from, you know, uh, you know General Motors, Futurama, and that sort of thing. You know, the car companies are here, they had a much smaller uh, uh, presence. This this really made uh, uh, use of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the wonderful weather that San Francisco had to offer. So, you know, it's all these gardens. And again, this is all very interesting. That, uh, there's the federal building in the background, the murals on either side. All this land had to be reclaimed, then it had to be specially treated so that plants would and everything grow in what had been a, uh, you know, saltwater, uh, you know, reclamation project. Spanish mission building back there, um, the, the, celebrating the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the missions across California. And you can see all sorts of sailors as the U.S. is bulking up, getting in towards war, but live concert going on. And then ships you could see passing by from the uh, the fairgrounds. Everybody quite in awe of both the Golden Gate and the uh, you know, the, the Bay Bridge. There is now a ferry that once again goes back and forth to uh, Treasure Island. So if you're in San Francisco, I'm just getting the next video ready. If you're in San Francisco these days, uh, you can go out and uh, visit uh, Treasure Island. You can drive out there, as Carol and I did a few years ago, and walk around. Or you can now take the ferry, which has a regularly scheduled uh, service going. So we're going to go and look. Bill, I saw something yesterday that, uh, you know, they've had plans for Treasure Island for a long time. And there's been controversy and all that. But they're finally starting a high rise out there um, for housing. That's interesting because the, uh, everything I keep saying, they're trying to figure out how to keep the island from settling more. So uh, right. building a high rise out there, I, I sure wouldn't be putting money into it. You know, they had that one other building in San Francisco, I don't remember the name of it, that sunk tremendously on the mainland side of it, uh, yeah. you know, where it's built on fill and uh, multi-million dollar condos. And now they're all suing each other left and right. 
So uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I put Blue Guy at the Treasure Island, but it's a pretty neat address if you got it. And Let yeah, me... good views. Yes, absolutely. Let me get the whole island, the whole island was man made, wasn't it? Yes. It was a rock there was a basically a rocky shoal that was there beforehand that would be visible at low tide. So a couple rocks would post uh, poke their heads out of the water. And that's why they figured they would build it there because they had the uh, uh, foundation to build on. But they basically just sent out giant dredges and for uh, about two years, just kept dredging up uh, the bottom of the bay, uh, enlarging a shipping channel and dumping the, uh, the sand and you know everything else, rocks and everything on the, the shoals. And then they uh, had to bring up you know, uh, heavy equipment to tamp it down and they, like I said, they had to spend a, a good amount of time with a, a desalinization project because everything that was brought up from it was still oozing water as they were building the fair. So it was a, uh, it was quite a quite an industri industrial uh, effort to, uh, you know, to build that out there. So there, there's an exit in the middle of the Oakland Bay Bridge to get off on the island, isn't there? Yeah, that's because I think it's called Angel Island, is it? Uh, you know, uh, Yerba Buena. Yerba Buena, oh, thank you. And uh, there's a little off ramp which takes you down there. So like I said, you could drive over. And they had a, uh, I have in my book about the fair, they have a picture of the, uh, 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 basically a thermometer type thing that would warn you before you got on the bridge how full the parking lots were because they realized once the fair opened that people would get over there, there was no place to park and you had to turn around and go back again. So they put a, thing in there to indicate whether or not you should drive out there or not. But the ferry was a, a real good system, uh, except when they opened it, they charged X amount, say it was a quarter, I'm just making up the number, might have been a dime, to get out there and another dime or a quarter to come back. And they were having all sorts of problems with people having spent all their money at the fair. Oh, yeah. They said they had no money to get back. So they changed the plan and said, okay, well now uh, let's you know, pay twice to get out there and come back for free. So. Uh, Again, the things you learn dynamically once you're in, in business. <laughs> so let me jump up to Disneyland. Uh, as I said, this is 1956. The uh, park has been open for uh, uh, less than a year at this point in time. Pretty profitable. <laughs> Not so crowded. You know, you look at it in these early days and you can see, oh, uh, mm -hmm. let me just go back here one second. Things move around all the time in the, uh, the park. So uh, right here, uh, Golden uh, Grail, uh, Holy Grail, a lot of people, Wonderland uh, Music Company. Uh, there's something else there on Main Street today, but uh, Disneyland had opened uh, its own record store and was you know, selling records. So for all sorts of us who were Disney record collectors, uh, you know, shots of the original Disney record store were, wow, you know, if you wish you could just, uh, just see inside of it, but you know, some things don't show up very often because they weren't there very long. Uh, it got moved to another spot on Main Street and then, you know, got, got bought out to something else. But it's always fun when things just show up like that. The swans were out in front of the castle for years. Let me just stop this one second. Uh, they were taken out recently. They said because of danger from the fireworks. I just don't think they wanted to pay an, uh, the vet to come and take care of them. But here you can see the King Arthur's Carousel, 10 cents. Back at this point in time, you could, uh, they had uh, the ticket books, the uh, A through D, they didn't have E's at the time. But a couple of attractions, you can still pay uh, uh, money, uh, uh, coins on. You could do that on the, uh, the horse drawn trolleys or on the, uh, what you call it, uh, some of the other Main Street vehicles. And then here you get 10 cents to take a ride on the, the carousel. The Dumbo ride over at the, uh, the Captain Hook's pirate ship restaurant. Look how bare Tom Sawyer's island is. The Mark Twain is coming around the island, and this is before the island was open to the public. So it's just basically dirt, some trees, and uh, there's nothing out there. No uh, fort, uh, or uh, you know anything. Uh, the Inch and Joe's cave or anything all came uh, a couple of years after this. How did they ever bring a boat that large in there? <laughs> yeah, well, they built the boat. Uh, the hull was built at a shipyard in Long Beach. The infrastructure was built on a soundstage in Burbank. And then they put them all together uh, down at the park. And uh, luckily, the top part fit on the bottom part. 
Original train, they took you around. Uh, oh, stop here real quick. Original train, they took you around inside uh, cars that looked like regular rail cars, or in some cases, they were uh, cattle type cars. Realized very quickly without air conditioning and that got hot, so they went to the seating arrangement you have today, and those uh, uh, cars were retired. This was a gazebo that was along the shores of the rivers of America that the Disneyland uh, entertainers would play at. It lasted for about eight years or so. Uh, don't know why they took it out, but here the straw hatters are playing. Go back here real quick, one second. You can see that the park was still very much a work in progress. So Nature's Wonderland, uh, they're expanding it, doing the Rainbow Caverns, and uh, there's still all sorts of framing and stuff going on out here. And go to the ever popular Jungle Cruise. I think some of the jokes are still in use today. <laughs> Real quick shots, obviously, the uh, the guy wasn't uh, staying. Oh, that's a, a real good one. If you go back here, you know, one second. Look at all the oranges. You know, when this was built, Disneyland was built, it was built on the site of a former orange grove. So uh, at some point in time, the bigger trees were still there. I think there's one tree left that has oranges from some times of the year. But uh, at this point in time, you can spot, still spot remnants of the ballroom or orange groves that the park had been built. The, dark, the back side of water. It's okay unless they're wiggling their ears. <laughs> I would love to do the Jungle Cruise, but uh, I was never allowed to do that. So let me go over to this. Why weren't you allowed to do that? What's that? Why weren't you allowed to do that? They didn't like your jokes? Uh, no, no. You basically have to be trained for it. Uh, they, uh, what happens is every year, well, though they don't do it now, but back when Carol and I worked there, every year the uh, park would, uh, for the uh, holiday Christmas party, management would run the park. So uh, they would let all the employees bring their families in and to give the hourly employees a night off, management would run the park. So if you had been a former Jungle Cruise uh, skipper that had gone into management, they would ask you to come back for a night. Uh, I knew how to run Space Mountain, so they would want me to run Space Mountain. Uh, I much preferred to do a, a character. So I, I usually would do Chip, Chip and Dale for year after year. But uh, they, they, if you weren't trained in anything because you had never worked in the park, like Carol hadn't worked in the park, she could easily be trained to do a character. So she was there uh, doing one of those. Another time when there was a strike and they had management running the park, <clears throat> Carol's dressed up in an outfit uh, selling stuff at the uh, the Mexican shop in the in uh, Frontierland. So uh, it was just I, you know. If I wanted to go down there and get trained on the Jungle Cruise, I guess I could have, but uh, it just didn't work out that way. So let's go to uh, the 1964 World's Fair. And uh, this is early in 1964. Uh, you'll see it's early for a few reasons. One is that the uh, uh, brass rail uh, restaurants are all sparkly clean, but also some of the pavilions or things are still being finished and done and that sort of stuff. Another way you can also start dating these, so the pictures up here on the uh, Kodak uh, uh, pavilion, uh, you know, you can look and say, oh, okay, the bride was there at opening day, the flowers, that, that sort of thing. So you can start uh, post checking some of those. Down below here, we have the Tower of the Four Winds, uh, Pepsi, uh, over here, Schaefer, New York in the back. So let's uh, take our tour here. This goes on for quite a while. But look how white and clean and everything is, huh? So, uh, and there, you just saw it was a smoke ring. There goes one from the uh, uh, Journal of Cigar Pavilion. We're going to see some really neat close-ups of the uh, Journal of Cigar in uh, a little while. Bill, is this an amateur uh, movie? Yes, this is all amateur. Oh, and now, let me pause this for one second. Okay, this is all uh, amateur 8-millimeter uh, film. So, uh, let me just back up real quick. Another way, let me... Another way to date it is here the Chunky Candy Factory. 
uh, for folks that weren't there, you had this great uh, uh, system or down the bit, uh, bottom where it says the candy factory. They had machines making candy and they would make uh, uh, different chunky candy things. Then we go through that glass cooling tunnel uh, that goes uh, up here where the mouse is up here. And then it would go over here, they would wrap it up, and then they would give out free samples of chunky candy, or you could buy boxes of it. Well, it was a great idea, except that and it, when the fair opened, it worked really well. But then the summer got there, and the cooling tunnel, it was the heat bearing down on it, and nothing would cool. So at the end, you got <laughs> hot, blobby bunches of chocolate. So you can, again, date photos of the fair because they had to go and cover over the cooling tunnel so it could actually cool it. As the camera pans over, we're going to one of the brass rail snack bars. And you can see uh, in this particular case, uh, the, all the seating that was here, they didn't have a lot of tables at the uh, snack bars. So you were expected to bring your uh, food out, just sit on the steps up here, eat your hot dog and everything, just like you would do at a Dodger or a Yankee game or whatever. Uh, then down below underneath here uh, were restrooms for the, at the fair. Um, and then uh, they have, have vending machines. So people are out here buying food, uh, that sort of stuff. But in this particular case, uh, for whatever reason, we don't have the uh, the balloons on top of the, the restaurant. Mm -hmm. But this gave us a, a nice view uh, of it. Bill, it almost looks like they had <clears throat> designed it to be like a little amphitheater, but there was no yes. other. But it was just for sitting and eating. Not that they didn't do any shows or entertainment or anything. What yeah. is the vantage point for for? This? Yeah, I was trying to figure where it was taken. Yeah. Shot an elevation. Yeah, uh, he's up at the. Uh, I, I believe this is at the Better Living Center, and uh, taking a shot here from the Better Living Center out of ah. the pool of industry. So here's Clarell down below, and uh, yeah, he had a zoom lens, and you can. It's actually interesting when he zooms in, you can start seeing some noise on either side of it, sort of picking, picking up like a vignetting sort of effect. Uh, when he did his wide shots, this uh, goes away. So it was, you know, lens defect from uh, from back at the time. But yeah, he's uh, definitely got some nice elevation. So over here, you got Equitable Insurance, IBM, uh, the uh, uh, Hall of Education. And uh, not talked about a lot, but over here, anybody want to guess what these are? Hmm. Those are VIP bleachers for the uh, uh, nightly fireworks show. So ah. advertise and but if you were from a pavilion that uh, say the uh, you know back General Motors for example, you didn't get a good view of the fireworks show uh, from uh, the General Motors pavilion. But if you were a General Motors VIP, you would get tickets to come over here and sit in the uh, the, the bleachers over here. And the bunker that controlled all the fireworks show was right over here too. So. Uh, but here, it's sort of, uh, I've mentioned before, this is a tidal fountain. Uh, the water would go out at low tide. And you can see the walkway that's out here that they would come out, walk over, carry the fireworks out in hand carts, load them into all the mortars, open up the floodgates, the tide would come back in, and then this would all be submerged. But yeah, those are the bleachers uh, over there. Right here, there's two semicircles. That's where the water uh, would go out uh, of the uh, 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 the the pool into the uh, Flushing River it entered on this side, came through, went out, and that's the uh, exit tunnels for the water over there. So you can pick up all sorts of fun things on these these shots. Bill, do you know it's kind of a weird question, but you mentioned restrooms being under those uh, brass rails. Did the fair build any facilities like restrooms, or is it all? They yeah. required, uh, basically the restrooms were required by uh, the fair company for brass rail to put an in so that uh, that was part of their licensing thing. And it was a good thing by the fair. They didn't have to build them themselves. Uh, I don't believe there were any standalone restrooms operated by the fair, which you can see in this one shot. We got one, two, three, four, five brass rails just in this shot, each of them having publicly accessible restrooms. Hmm. And the major buildings, the major pavilions also had restrooms. Yeah, they all had their own the big ones, you know, like GM or Ford or whatever. But if you're just wandering around and you needed a place to go, so uh, all sorts of them. There goes our smoke ring. Or attempting to be a ring. A lot of times. Yeah, I'm gonna say, more like a smoke cough. Yeah. <laughs> 
The fountains were great. Okay, these are a, gr a group called the nervous, nerveless knots. Uh, again, I apologize the footage when the guy did the telephoto stuff, there were some issues. But the, they're a group that still performs today. Matter of fact, uh, some of them are members of this uh, uh, Facebook group. They went on these giant poles, were over in the lake amusement area, and they would go up these poles and then uh, swing from pole to pole, switch places. Uh, and you can see why they call them the nerveless knots, because you can't have much in the way of nerves to be, uh, to be doing that. Bill, do you know if it was there both seasons? Uh, I, I know they were there in 64. I do not know about 65, to be honest with you. I'd, I'd have to look through my photos and see. I'm going to be rescanning this picture. I, I got word that my new camera for the scanner is coming soon. It's supposed to do a lot better with some of these issues, but I wanted to share this with you now. The, the, the thing has been delayed. I'm looking forward to getting it, and I'm not looking forward to having to redo a whole bunch of pictures, but uh, I will. Belgian Village being built. Our favorite New York State pavilion. Trash trucks going through the fair in the middle of the day. You know, things you would never do at Disneyland. But they didn't quite build service roads so that they could be seen out of sight. Vatican Pavilion. Astral Found. Look at the size of that cage in relation to the people walking past it. Inside the New York State Pavilion. They had all sorts of different exhibits up there in the mezzanine, uh, you know, fire trucks and things about Sterling Forest and, and fascinating things on how the New York State uh, tax system worked. One of the many bands entertaining. <laughs> there was a both a full service type restaurant in there, but there was also a giant number of uh, vending machines that you could go and get your food and take it out and sit at the picnic tables while you listen to whatever group who is entertaining or watch dance troops or anything there. I think one of the trees in the pot inside there still survives today. Yeah, well, the pots are still there. I don't know if the trees are uh, the, uh, the same ones, but uh, uh, be nice if, it, if they are. And this is interesting. There's people up dancing on the roof there trying to get you to come in and see Dick uh, Button's uh, Ice Travaganza. So they were you know, like carnival barkers up on the, the roof trying to get you to come in. Again, a way you can help date it because the show blows. You know, throughout, you know, through the, did make it through the 64 season. One of the escorters zipping by. Hong Kong with its three jumps. And Amer uh, Central America and Panama. If you see it, it's Central America is one word. There it is, because they were trying to, uh, you know, do it just like you have the, you know, in European economic community. They were trying to tout it that Central America is one unified uh, uh, economic powerhouse, and it didn't quite work out that way. But that was a branding thing they were trying for a number of years. Hmm. Everybody lining up to get their picture in front of this, uh, the Great Seal which they all managed to break all the lights that were there. So I have on my website all their efforts and how they were trying to keep people from uh, doing just that. Hmm. Outside of India. Swiss Skyride was really spectacular with two sets of, you know, uh, 
you know, rail, uh, not rails, cables on either side. So you had a tremendous number of cars in operation on a busy day. And people will know it can get kind of breezy out in Flushing Meadows. So sometimes it was an interesting ride as we kind of go from side to side. Just general view of the grounds. Looks like this uh, piece got repeated somehow. <laughs> so I definitely remember seeing this a moment ago. I'll have to go through and look at the, the video and see how that happened. So we're getting to see Indonesia again. Maybe you just really liked Indonesia. Yeah, yeah, that was it. I, I really did. Actually, I just wanted to be able to predict the future, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So I apologize for the repeated footage. Some ha what happens on some of these, uh, I have to scan them two or three times uh, to try to get the light shot, the dark shots or whatever. And this particular one, uh, I just finished doing this uh, Thursday night and I didn't have a chance to check it. And obviously I took one of the scans that was done for light and one of the scans was done with dark and I put them end to end instead of cutting back and forth between them. So something else to do in my spare time. helicopter or that's actually a plane going on into a LaGuardia airport uh oh this that's right uh is it, is it the, either this video or the next video the guy would be uh I think it's the next one which was kind of really jerky I don't apologize in advance but the guy would be fo photographing uh stuff like you know his wife or kids at the fair and a plane would go by and he'd whip the camera up and follow the plane across the sky <laughs> and then come back down and then he'd be, uh, you know, uh, photographing, you know, uh, Mickey Mouse and oh, up the, the plane up going by. And he was really lousy footage of all the planes. They were so blurry and uh, the exposure was bad. I, I cut out almost all of them. But, uh, you know, you'd have the, the reel of film would last three minutes and he'd have a, a minute and a half of uh, airplanes going by. <laughs> We're not seeing this one again. My God, what did Bill? What did you do here? <laughs> Let me jump. See if I can jump up. Yep, like a Spali restaurant again. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bill, this this stuff is really really great for the subject matter, but uh, his lens quality leaves something to be desired. Yeah. And I wonder. Uh, do you have anything in your bag of tricks to take out some of the rainbow effects on the edges? Yeah, uh, part of it, I'm waiting for the new camera, which has a much dense, uh, much greater uh, uh, range for, you know, between lights and darks that should help on some of it. Uh, this has actually been enhanced more than you would realize. The original footage was incredibly blurry. And this has been uh, sharpened up uh, quite a bit in the the computer. Some of the other stuff, like some of the uh, you know aberrations and that sort of thing, there's probably tools I can use to do something with it. I'm just waiting until I get the the new camera in to uh, to redo it and see how much that helps uh, fix it for me. This was super overexposed and like I said, very very blurry. Um, I had, so I had to put it in the computer, and the computer was taking about six hours for this particular reel to sharpen it to uh, you know drop down the uh the the uh, uh exposure like i said this was just it was all washed out it was incredibly uh uh it was just you know uh, overexposed no other way to put it hmm. so i mean it's a really nice job but you don't see most of the artifacts you see from sharpening yeah, I mean, it, uh, oh, we're also, look, it's uh, 5.25 in the afternoon, so we're getting later in the day. Yeah, you know, I mean, I make no pretense that these are award-winning, uh, you know, uh, cinematography, uh, you know, miracles. But uh, I figure they're 60 years ago, uh, you know, getting and going back to fixing it is uh, a little tough. Here's the uh, uh, Chrysler Pavilion. I, I don't remember, I guess it was in this one, another one, we see the oil pan turning up on the, the top. Oh, here it is. Yeah, you can see it rotating around. U.S. rubber. <laughs> yep. Change and change. 
during the fair they changed the name over to uh who the hell did it become whatever Goodyear? It was. no it was never good year it was uh you know, Union Royal. Union Royal, that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, good year was the blip. Got myself crossed. <laughs> so it's getting later in the day. The lights are starting to come on. But, oh, not this again. Oh, my God. What the hell did I do? <laughs> I'm just jumping up here to something new. Uh, you I, hopefully at the end, hopefully I absolutely didn't blow it. The nighttime footage the guy got was really good. Kodak. We're in the Central American Highway Gardens, a very empty spot that was supposed to be somebody else's pavilion that they threw this in as a space saver. And then in uh, 65, it was a go-kart rink. Hmm. One of those empty lots that was supposed to be a pavilion later became a garden. It's still there, isn't it? Like the meditation garden or something? Right. That was another one, the garden of meditation. Mm -hmm. That's still there. Which I always found weird because it was about three feet from one of the expressways. So <laughs> I didn't meditate with all that traffic. <laughs> General Cigar, we'll see more of that coming up. I thought the fair was a lot of fun just to walk around, all these fountains and everything. But to me, I just call it eye candy. It was just, even if you didn't have the money to do a lot, you know, there were some days I just went out, wandered around. There's one of the pay phones down below in the Mormon pavilion. It was uh, just uh, great fun to uh, walk around, you know, and just see everything that was going on. There's a helicopter oh, right. heading to or from the Port Authority. Billy Graham. And there's one of the brass rails from the ground level with the balloons on top. Still pretty clean. Yep. British Lion Pub, the Berlin Pavilion. Singer Ball, the big amphitheater. And down below, you can see Singer sewing machines, but yeah, they certainly didn't draw attention to themselves. Sweden, Paris, Theaterama with the artwork on it. The VIP lounge level. Oh, like all these flags out on the bridges, you know, they had no, uh, you know, they were just colorful swatches and stuff. They didn't represent any particular nation or anything else, but uh, they just uh, looked great, uh, you know, and it sounded great as you walked out there and the wind was going, they were flapping in the wind. It was, uh, it was just all part of the ambiance. Let me see if I can jump this up for his nighttime stuff. It's, okay, yeah. So uh, we're, we're just getting there. At night, he went by and got some really interesting night shots. So you can just see uh, uh, the luminaires, you know, different color schemes. There's uh, the Chrysler rocket in the back, the Chrysler car, the giant car you'd walk underneath. The Ford Magic Skyway. Hmm. It's not only. Just row after row of the lights going off. You know, there were so many of them, you know, uh, all over the fairgrounds. Not quite sure what we're looking at here. More editing needed. It's like a high view of the fair at night. Yeah. Yeah, what I, I could not put, put this through the usual post processor uh, to try to drag more uh, lightness out of it because it just threw it off totally. It's it, it's so dark it just drove it crazy. So these were uh, run to stabilize it, but not to uh, try to adjust the, the lighting levels. 
that's the fountain at the Chrysler was the rocket thundering out. That thing was loud, really, really loud when you were near it. And the Ferris wheel. General Motors, the facade changed color uh, with the lights down below, so it'd be green one point, blue the next, red. Travel and Transportation Pavilion. Bunch of the serpentine phone booths, they were lit up nicely. Go Greyhound and leave the driving to us. So I will end that particular one. And we're going to, let me get the next one. I didn't know the Greyhound sign rotated. The Greyhound what? Sign rotated. Yeah, that's the sort of thing I, I enjoy. You pick up in some of these uh, movies that, uh, you know, things that were so static and all the... Uh, 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 other film, you know, it's, it's a 35 millimeter slide, all of a sudden you see some motion. So this particular one, uh, we're going to look at both 64 and 65. And I'll just tell you in advance, this guy was the master of the fast cut. So, uh, you know, you, you got to maximize your amount of film and see uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you know, bing, bang, boom, you got to jump around from place to place, but it, we still get some uh, some good views. Sometimes he did stuff like that where he would just pan from one thing to another. I took out some really, really obnoxious ones where he says, oh, let me show you the line for something. And he'd whip <laughs> it like the whip pans that they used to uh, change scenes in the Man from Uncle TV show. I mean, it was just, he just went back and forth. And there's, he's photographing and mom's getting him or vice versa. So Maybe they, filming into a mirror. It could be, yeah, that could be right. Sometimes the footage, you know, like you see that gal looks like she was fox trotting. I think his camera was spring loaded, and as the spring started to wear down, the film would be going slower. So now, as you scan it all at a consistent uh, 16 frames per second, at times some people look like they're uh, doing a turkey trot. Vatican Pavilion with a sign telling you that Cardinal Spellman's coming to visit. So you can see this is later in the year. First of all, you know when Cardinal Spellman came, he helped date it. But also people wearing heavier coats and, uh, you know, not looking like the middle of summer. Another hint that it's later in the year is the Belgian Village is finally open. After delaying the opening of the Belgian Village for a whole year, did it hurt attendance on the second year? Well, it, was, uh, it opened about a month before the fair closed uh, for the first season. So it was open for part of the uh, 64 season, uh, and then it was open for all of 65. So, uh, you know, they had hoped to have it open the whole time, but, uh, you know, he just kept running into money issues, money issues, union issues, and it got greatly delayed. Moses was a friend of the guy who was uh, building it. Uh, th this particular one I first saw, I said, oh, okay, it must be Kodak, and it is. Moses let them film the, uh, 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 finish the uh, uh, Belgian village while he tore down others like the world of food that weren't done in time. Because if he were his friend, he bent the rules. If you weren't his friend, he didn't. Okay, that, that village is probably the most expensive, time-consuming building to put up, and it opened almost a year late. Yeah, almost. Well, there were uh, the uh, Hall of Science was also very, very late. But at least they kept it up permanently. They made something from it. Yep. Well, semi permanently. I have no idea who that guy was, uh, but he's somebody being interviewed on a TV camera. We're going to see some. Uh, for Wayne, you'll probably enjoy this. There's a really neat uh, scene coming up of WNYC television remote crew out right on the fairgrounds. So, see what I mean by how he did the, the, the fast pants? Some of our ever-present nuns <laughs> looking over at Clarol, and then another view, and these ladies are passing out little hints on getting your hair done. And Would nuns still go out today up. dressed in their habits? What's that? Would the nuns still go out today in public dressed in their habits? 
Some do, some orders do, not anywhere near as, as many as in the past, but uh, every now and then you see, uh, see one going by. Yeah. He obviously had good taste spending so much time taking pictures of the Bell system, one of my favorite civilians. Mm -hmm. Late in the day. He, he took a picture of the pavilion and then he just kind of wandered off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, hard figuring out what uh, he was doing or what he was looking at at some times or why he would focus on something so long and others he would just bam, go through it. Traveler's insurance. Unfortunately, over on the left, you also had a lot of light bleed, whether his, uh, you know, when he swapped the reels over, he was having some issues or camera problems, but. So the Bell Building and the U.S. Pavilion were the only two I remember supported on just a couple of pylons. Yeah, and they were done by American Bridge Company. They they, uh, they they knew how to put things up and kind of leave the. Oh, go to get a picture of Korea, but then I get distracted. <laughs> and we have to go take a look at the Los Voladores performers, but just one quick look and then. This guy, uh, obviously, uh, going up to the top here and going to do some more of the show. Not a job I would want. <laughs> they were very, very popular at the uh, 64 fair. And then the same group made an appearance at Hammer's Fair 68. They were mm -hmm. one of the, uh, the big draws there, uh, sponsored by Pepsi at the, at the Hemisphere. So everybody's here, you, you, you've got the Mexico in front of you, the industry behind you, you wait, and finally they go. I always look when I see people doing things like uh, skating and they're spinning around, the, how they keep from getting dizzy, I don't know how they do it. But these guys going around and around and around, I wouldn't be able to stand up straight at the end of it. You'll see they uh, come down head first and then they just flip themselves over and come down on their feet, they're okay. And the guy sitting on top of the tower, he's rotating the thing with his feet. You notice that? Yep, and we're going to see him come down now. He was up there. He was the guy giving it the uh, propulsion to get up, to get everybody around. And he comes down much quicker than uh, than they did. But good point to mention. Thank you, Irv. Wasn't motorized. It was all, all tech. Yeah, all tech. What a job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No safety harnesses at all. I'm no. amazed I accidentally fell. I know. Mayan calendar. The statue of the freedom of the human spirit still in the park today. It's been moved, but it's still there. You know, I think look how nice the people, look how nicely people dressed. Yeah. I don't think that was a mirror before Don, because that guy that was just seen walking with a lady, I think it was two cameramen both taking pictures of each other. Oh, okay. He had his camera bag over his uh, shoulder. Ah. Man, he doesn't stay long on any given shot. <laughs> no. I, I've taken that. Oh, there's the TV crew. Vintage camera here. I've taken out the worst of it. I mean, some of it was just awe-inspiring. I mean, literally, yes. I would look and it'd be eight frames, you know, and you think, <laughs> okay, you know, if you're doing 16 frames a second, you just got half a second worth of stuff. Was it really worth it? At one point, he also walked through the fairgrounds, uh, not realizing he was holding the, uh, the, the, the button on the camera. So I, I have about uh, 
40 seconds of his feet and sidewalks as he walked around. <laughs> that was an expensive mistake for him. Yes, for back then it was. We're going to see more of the little gal in a few minutes. More, a real quick shot again, the TV one. So now we've gone to 65. Uh, again, you can tell they, they painted the Tower of the Four Winds. They painted the monorail tower. So again, he'd be looking at Mickey, and, and then something would distract him and say, oh, airplane, and off he'd go. So uh, solar fountain. And again, the Fair Corporation had its issues, money problems and everything, but I always thought they kept the grounds in very, very nice condition. Uh, up until the, the final week, you real oh, here, this is General Cigar. They had this uh, a little uh, uh, mechanized thing in the window, all made of uh, different uh, you know, cigar products going around. Uh, there was somebody that wrote to me that after the fair, his uncle got the, the cigars and he still has them. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's nice to know that that's survived and is sitting in somebody's, uh, you know, collection. But it was all don't, they, a don't they go bad thing. after a while? What's that? Don't they go bad after a while? Oh, I imagine they do. I don't smoke cigars, but it's so nice that all these little cigar soldiers and everything else, mm -hmm. he still had them. So, yeah, I'm sure like everything else, they dry out and lose their, their taste. You need a humidor to keep the moisture in. Yeah, after 60 years, good luck. <laughs> Funny, some pavilions I remember so well. Sudan, all I remember is they had some very interesting exotic birds there. Very they look like they nice. had musical instruments in their hands, so they were probably performing somewhere at the fair that day. I got a kick out of this because there's the uh, uh, beside what well, uh, actually be a Polaris missile. At 65, and then, uh, you know, uh, eight years later, I was designing the replacement for it. 65, they made a big thing of the uh, Lowenbrow uh, beer wagon going around the fairgrounds and getting people going back. I don't think I have any footage of it touring around at 64, so it appears to be more of a 65 uh, stunt that they did. And we're going to go for a ride on the uh, Avis cars. The Avis cars, were they a 65 only feature? No, they were there in 64 and 65. In 65, Avis opened a second location. That's where the Pan American Gardens were, and those were more uh, go kart type cars. They weren't the antique cars uh, that they had here, but this was here in the uh, uh, transportation area both years. Did those kids ever figure out that they weren't actually steering the car? <laughs> ah, come on, don't don't bust their bubble. <laughs> Somebody's having a good day jumping up and down. Chrysler repainted in its 65 colors. I found that to be very garish. I like the uh, subtler 64 colors myself. And it became Uniroyal, US rubber. Name change. Teleport, and then we're going for a ride on the uh, Ferris wheel. Again, you can start dating pictures. They had to put cages on these things because people were leaning out and doing all sorts of dangerous things. We're over to New Jersey right now.
looking at an antique car, I think it was a Mercer, if I remember right. Anyway, car built in, in New Jersey. Great way to cool off a little bit with the mist from the unisphere. Looks like nobody was waiting in the fountain in those days. Even no, though back then, if you jumped in the fountain, the Pinkertons would have been on you in about 0.7 seconds. Yeah, um, you, you figure it'd be tempting to go up there and touch the base of the unisphere. Yeah, no, uh, they, they really, uh, it's interesting because you can see pictures at other fairs like Expo 67. Oh, we're out of the fair now, but for people that get a kick out of uh, bridges and the New York highways, I left this on. Uh, but yeah, back in 64, they they just got on, like, if you went in a fountain, they, they'd be on you right away. I do have some pictures of people sitting with their feet in the fountain, which they let you do. But I think if you stood up, uh, you uh, you were escorted out of there. And it was for your own safety. Those water jets were very powerful, and the uh, base of the uh, thing would get very slick. So, uh, you know, having people out there would not be a, a good idea. So, off we go to beautiful New Jersey. We got to visit Fort Lee. I believe this is the Garden State Parkway. If anybody happens to recognize it, uh, for sure. Certainly not the New Jersey Turnpike. It's uh, it's too scenic. But my view, my memories in Garden State Parkway was that every single town had its own toll booth and would uh, hitch you up for a quarter here, a quarter there. And, you know, rather than just being able to give them five bucks to ride the whole thing, every town had its own toll booth because every town wanted its quarter. That that could have been the Palisades Interstate Parkway too. No, oh, thank you. That could be. I, I had totally forgotten about the Palisades. Thank you. The reason I say that is because just before you got on that parkway at the GWB, there was a sign for the Palisades Parkway. Yes. I'm guessing that's what it was, but it could have been the, the Garden State Parkway, too. Thank you. Yeah, it could have been either one. And, and you're probably right. It, it, uh, it probably was the Palisades one because I didn't see any toll booths. Yeah. There were so many toll booths across the parkway that you wasted more time than you saved by driving on the highway. Oh, yeah. It used to drive my dad crazy. The Southern State Parkway in Long Island had a 10 cent toll and you would, uh, you know, be stuck there for 10 minutes or something to get through the stupid thing. And my father would say, look, can I give you a buck and just, you know, go through it the next time? You know? <laughs> and when they announced they were and then they went from 10 cents to jump to 25. I mean, talk about a massive increase. Uh, when they finally announced that it was I forget who it was ran for governor of uh, New York, but one of his uh, uh, big uh, campaign things was toll-free Long Island. So everybody in Long Island voted for this guy because nobody wanted to pay that damn 10 cent on Southern State Inc. So we're gonna jump up to Disney World in uh, 1975. This is a Super 8 movie. Again, not the, uh, uh, the lenses on some of these cameras back then, you, you try to figure they were making them out of plastic or something else. I had to do a fair amount of sharpening on this one. And another guy that jumped a lot from scene to scene, but uh, we do get some views of uh, Disney World of uh, the past, uh, particularly here with Tomorrowland. Like there's the big fountain in the background that uh, came thundering down as you walked into uh, Tomorrowland. They've changed this area so much, you know, it doesn't look like this at all, but it was, it's basically, uh, you know, the Disneyland or the Disney World that I worked at. So to me, it's, uh, you know, good, good to see it. Oh, this is 10 years after the World's Fair, but look how more casual people were dressing. Oh, yeah. You, well, first of all, we're in Florida, so the weather is that much hotter. But yes, just in 10 years, uh, things have changed tremendously in how people go out through a public entertainment. Mm -hmm. Hey, you would not have seen people dressed like with that crop top in, uh, you know, in 64. Hi, little girl. <laughs> Not along the Jungle Cruise. Mm 
All the bad Jungle Cruise jokes are coming to me. I'm just controlling myself. I'm a big girl, Daddy. I don't need your help. Ah, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the Pirates of the Caribbean area here. Yep, let's look at all the flowers. Let's look at all the people. Look at more flowers. My a friend of mine, we were talking about this the other day. He said Kodak should have done a, uh, uh, a, a TV special on how to make better home movies. You know, and maybe people would have enjoyed them more, uh, you know, when uh, all that happened. Let me... Uh, just look at all the chats here. Oh, Beth had saddle shoes just like the little girls right around 76 to 77. So, uh, still got them? I still have a pair, yes. Not that pair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine you've grown a little. Let me just go back here through the uh, thing. Um, okay. Yeah, Charlie Chan visited Treasure Island. Uh, that, in that particular movie, he basically really didn't visit it. They just did it with some uh, rear screen projection. Because I watched that, I, I wanted to see it, uh, figuring, oh my God, this is great. I'm going to be able to see more of Treasure Island. They fly over it, and they sit on here down below the World's Fair, and then there's some background process shots. Uh, but uh, you know, I was expecting just like Elvis, you know, at, at the World's Fair running through it. You know, there'd be all sorts of great stuff. No, nah, it's just, you know, Take advantage of, of, of the name. Yeah, the the Elvis movie has to be the best use of a, a World's Fair as a backdrop. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, he, he kept, kept thinking, you know, I mean, I, I, I just love the movie. It's 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 typical Elvis. It's you know, uh, you, you know, from shot <laughs> one to the end exactly how it's going to go. But just seeing the background of the fair, and I love the end of it when he's, uh, you know, uh, singing with the band and he's going through the park and the whole crowd's coming out and everything. I, I just think that's, uh, you know, and of course, Kurt Russell making his debut and kicking him in the knee. You know, I mean, how, how can that not be a wonder? And the romantic interest, uh, Joan O'Brien, yep. such a beautiful woman. Yeah. Seen her in a couple other things. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually the Melomen singing too. They do a, a song called, uh, Something one heart per sale or something. Mel and Mel were the ones who who sang at Disneyland a lot. Thur Thurl. Thurl oh, wrote. Okay. Yeah, it was this was their bass. And they sing a number in that thing called in that movie. It's a good movie. Darren Simon said he needs to drum me. I just happen to have a bottle of methylazine here on my desk because I've been having a little problem again with vertigo, so I keep it nearby. But I I apologize for some of the things. And Richard mentioned the Knopf family. Yeah, Bella Knopf, we saw him uh, perform live a number of years ago. He did a uh, thing, Carol and I took the kids to the circus, and he did an amazing act with, you know, the Wheel of Death and everything else. And uh, I saw him on America's Got Talent, and he didn't get picked as the, the guy. It was like, he, I mean, the guy is defying his death and everything. And I would have picked him, and they picked some country singer or something. But, yeah, that, their family, I guess his daughter's still uh, carrying the tradition on and, you know, performing that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, the, the nervous, nerveless knocks, uh, you know, they're still with us doing stuff. <laughs> Online since, the, wow, been in circus business since the 1840s. Wow. So, crazy. You know, it's uh, not too many families can say they've been doing something for 180 years. I don't even know what my family was 180 years ago. So, well, again, not the great uh, uh, you know, uh, examples of cinematography, but particularly stuff like the uh, the 39 fair uh, footage doesn't come along too often. And uh, I enjoyed seeing stuff like the uh, uh, the key system ferries and you know some of the bits of uh, Spanish in San Francisco. Maybe in the future, uh, I'll I'll show you what it's like to drive across the Golden Gate Bridge four times, but. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it is always interesting what people, you know, decide. Uh, you, you think about it. If you went back there and you had, you know, we, we give you a, you know, a roll of film. I've got one around here somewhere. Here you got three minutes. Go capture everything. You know, what what would you pick for the fair? You know, I mean, you know, like some of these guys, I'll get you 30 seconds or a 
third of a second or half a second, you know, of everything, or would you just try to do more of the general rounds or whatever? Yeah, I wanted to jump back at uh, one point and tell a guy, take more shots of the Sky Street elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, and and you know, I was thinking about you, Wayne, when I did it. You know, I see the the shot of the the ca the TV camera go by, and it's you know, oh, it'd be nice. I guess I could grab the still frame. I wonder what time that was. But you know, uh, he's got somebody being interviewed, and you know, you've got literally one and a half seconds of footage. So trying to figure out who this guy was, if he was important enough that he had all these TV cameras on him, and if it was important enough, you film it. You think you'd say maybe. Five seconds would be better, but hey, you know, it's it's to me it's better, but I, I think it's better having bad film than no film. Mm -hmm. I have yet to find uh, any of, of me at the fair. I I, I think I'm going to mention in the uh, week or so, two weeks ago, the last talk. My mother, I'm restoring her uh, home movies, and she's got uh, about. 10 seconds, 20 seconds of very, very, very bad footage of the uh, Los Loadores performance in Mexico. So bad you can't even watch it. It wasn't lit right. Everything was terrible. And that's the only footage I've been able to find of the, uh, 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 you know, what my parents did. Now, she went and took uh, some really great video of, uh, 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 not video, but film back then of uh, uh, the Pope at Yankee Stadium and, you know, uh, did a nice job. And then, you know, I said, oh, wow, we're into 64, 65. This is going to be great. And they were, oh, my, what were you doing? So I don't, hopefully something will turn up as I go through boxes and boxes and stuff. But I am finding all sorts of other great movies I could really, really bore you with of me and my brothers at Lake Opaca, New Jersey, and running through all these kitty parks in the Adirondacks and stuff like that. So How many know, times do you figure you went to the fair? Oh, how many times I went? I don't know. I, uh, I went four times. I'd say it was probably closer to 50. Wow. So you, had, you had a season pass, right? <laughs> no, it was, uh, they didn't sell season passes back then. Uh, they, they, they really came out for the, uh, 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 for Expo, who uh, introduced the, the season pass. Uh, I had a friend that worked at the Bell System, uh, and his, uh, his, his, his sister worked at the Bell System. So she could very often get us into the uh, the grounds for free. We wouldn't know until we got there because I always had to bring my dollar to buy a ticket just in case. But she was very, very good at sweet talking the guards and to, uh, you know, letting uh, the three of us, because we, uh, my, my friend Mike, my brother Jim, and myself, and we they put us in the backseat of a brand new Mustang convertible with the top down. First time I'd ever been in a convertible, we'd go to the fair. If I couldn't go with them, uh, I would go with the Boy Scouts. Uh, so that was like a week right there doing the Boy Scout bit. Uh, my friend, uh, my, another friend, Bob, he's got the only pictures I have of me at the World's Fair. Called up one day and said, we're going to the World's Fair. Uh, do you want to go? And I, I said, yeah, I want to go. And my mother wasn't home. There was nobody home but me. And I had next to no money. So I, I popped all the dimes out of my coin holder that you would... Uh, you know, you put all your dimes in and nickels and that sort of thing. Left my note. I went to the World's Fair. I don't know if I'll be home for dinner. Left it on the table and I went. So we were there having a, a great time and enjoying ourselves. And I, 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 again, I didn't have much money. So for dinner, I'm eating a hot dog. And uh, my friend Bob looks over at me and says, it's Friday. I didn't think you were supposed to be eating meat on a Friday. Because being Catholic. And I was just like horrified. <laughs> Because I've got half a hot dog and I've got no money to buy anything else. And I figured if I'm going to hell, I'll just take the express train. So I finished my hot dog. But it's still, it always stuck with me that he just across the table and, uh, uh, you know, asked me about that. But yeah. Were you, living, were you living close by at the time that you made so many trips there? What's that? Where were you living at the time? Were you near? We were, were living near in uh, Baldwin, Long Island, South Shore, Long Island, and uh, we could take the train. We could take the train into, uh, uh, it was only about a mile walk to the train station. We could take the train in, uh, change at Jamaica, and then take the uh, the train out to uh, the Long Island Railroad stop and, and, and go over there. So we had the schedule, uh, and I've mentioned this before, My I was 12 for the first year, and the first time my mom took us, uh, and, you know, uh, they they didn't like the fair that much because there were five of us and just trying to keep five kids from getting lost was a monumental thing. 
So my mom basically said I could go as often as I wanted and I had to find a way to pay for it. But then if I took my brother, Jim, so uh, I would have, uh, at that time, you would recycle a soda bottle was 25 cents, uh, sorry, uh, it was five cents for the little soda bottles and uh, uh, 10 cents for the big ones. And uh, I can safely say there wasn't a soda bottle in ba the, my part of Baldwin for two years, because I would go and walk in every park, uh, I'd go to every, every place I could find, the train station, every place, take all the bottles home. You could also make money by recycling newspapers or magazines, which we would do with the Boy Scouts every year. Well, I just did it all year, and my dad, our car didn't easily fit into the garage anyway, so my father would let me fill it up to, you know, head height with newspapers, and we would take them over, and they'd give you like 10 cents a pound or something. And my brother Jim was a real smart guy, because he realized that uh, I couldn't go to the World's Fair unless he went. And why should he bother recycling bottles? <laughs> so I ended up buying a ticket for my brother, which Ooh. I would gladly do today if the poor guy was still with us. But we used to have the greatest time. We would, I mean, I, I was 12, he was 11, and you know, we'd get on the train and we'd, uh, you know, uh, be glued to each other. So we were, uh, I'll admit, we were scared, you know, getting the first time it went off was a little scary. By the 10th or 12th time, we got it down to a science. And it'd be some other kid on the train and you'd teach him, oh, don't worry, I'm an old hand at this. But yeah, we won a lot. Uh, it was, uh, like I said, it was like a summer playground uh, to go to for two years. And uh, that's why it made such an impression on me that, you know, I, I, I was able to basically go to everything. I don't think I saw the, uh, some things closed real early. I did not see Dick Button show. Uh, I did not see the uh, uh, Texas uh, uh, musical show. Because again, I didn't have any money for it. That wasn't as interesting to me as going to see a bunch of dinosaurs. So it was great fun. It was it was a safer world than that a twelve year old could take a train trip like that. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we would. Uh, my my buddy Bob, the guy that uh, I went to one day with, we were working on our bicycle merit badge for Boy Scouts, and you had to take a. Uh, it was 525 mile and 150 mile ride. And we couldn't figure out anywhere for the 50 that was worthwhile. So why don't we take a 70 mile ride? And we rode into uh, uh, New York. His father was a New York City fire captain at the time. And we went to Reese Park. Uh, out on, uh, people know where that is. And it's a heck of a ride from Baldwin through the Rockaways along the boardwalk and everything. And then we turned around and came back. And I think I got home. It was right around... Uh, was I think it was a Halloween day and kids were out trick or treating. It was getting really dark, and you know, back then my mother would you know you leave at the house at six in the morning, you come home at eight at night. You know, enjoy a nice day. Today, you know, I'd be terrified. Where are the kids? What are they doing? No cell phones. <laughs> it's a whole different, uh, whole different world. Or if you clearly haven't read the Devil in the White City. Yeah, yeah. We missed you earlier, Tom. I was showing pictures of the Wonderland Music Store in the uh, Town Square oh. in 1956. Oh, I, I hope you can pull them out for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I can do that. This, I'll stick this on YouTube too. But uh, you know, I was looking for you, and then Tom's a huge Disney record collector. And I yeah. was to Tom how the Wonderland Record Shop is like the holy grail. You know. Oh yeah, I'd Did love to. Do that. Store, I'm sorry. Did that record store sell just Disney stuff, or could you buy Elvis there, or anything? Yeah, I don't know for sure, but I think it was only Disney. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, uh, you know they had quite a uh, lineup of records and everything at the time. You know, uh, you know that they, they were doing so. Um, it was. Uh, it, it, you see, like I said, shots. It didn't say in one spot, then it moved, and then it was gone. But uh, there's a really nice shot of it going by. Um, I recently, two days ago, I just, I've been working on a, a, a project that's been taken way too long. Are people familiar with Hollywood Film Enterprises? Tom, are you familiar with those? The, oh, you mean like Hollywood Records? No, they, they made, uh, they, they would take a, a Disney film like uh, Mickey's Picnic, and they would take it out and uh, put it out in black and white uh, uh, things that they would, Give different names like Mickey Swat the Fly, uh, Pluto Eats a Bug, you know. And, and so people are constantly saying, I got this undiscovered Mickey Mouse film that nobody knows about, Clar yeah. uh, Clarabelle Cow's uh, Christmas Party. And no, it was something else cut down. But I've been making this chart of 
what the uh -huh. name was, what the original cartoon was, and try to sort it out. I haven't gotten them all done, but you know, uh, that was the sort of thing you know that Disney did. They would license stuff off to other people, and then when they realized the other people were making a lot of money, let's bring it in house. And that's what they did with the records. They would license stuff off yeah. to Columbia Records and Decca Records and everything. And, and sorry, RCA, yeah. yeah, RCA. And then, wow, why should they make all the money? We'll bring it in house. And and Disneyland Records was a huge powerhouse in the fifties and sixties. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they had all the Mickey Mouse Club records, and then you know, yeah. records, the, the Snow White records, and then stuff you you never imagined. You know, people doing gospel singing or uh, you know, music award or... singers. <laughs> What's that? The ward singers. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are really weird. And then you know, Jiminy Cricket teaching you multiplication and division, and you know, they they. they so Tom has an outs I I have a modest collection. Tom has an outstanding collection. So, uh, you know. Um, and yet I bet you still have things I don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it works both ways. You know, when when I worked at the uh, the studio, uh, the record department was in Carroll's building, the Royal Disney building. And uh, every now and then they would decide that they would get rid of stuff. And uh, uh, I mentioned the guy I liked it. So he would say like, you know, they had X amount of shelf space and they keep moving, making more stuff. So they didn't have more shelf space. They just had more stuff. So they would realize they had four file copies of something and they would just throw out a file copy. So I have a number of records. That I keep waiting for the FBI to bust me because it has a big stamp on it. Walt Disney Records file copy, not to be removed from the studio. And they're sitting <laughs> in the living room because I didn't steal them. They were throwing them out. And the guy said, do you want these? Hell yeah. Never played. You know, I'll, I'll take hmm. it. Neat. That's awesome. Yeah. So, <laughs> do you guys have all the Mickey Mouse Club records? Um, like, um, oh, what? Yeah, like Talent Roundup and all that kind of stuff. You know, every day they had a different theme. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I had all. Gotta be a Musketeer. Yeah. Um, right now, there's one for uh, Annette Funicello. It's called My Teenage Wedding. And the last I saw it was up to four hundred and ninety-five dollars for a forty-five picture picture sleeve. Wow. Is this something she sang for one of her, uh, you know, the serials they did on Disney? Or no, no, this is when she actually got married. Oh wow! Really? Okay. Yep. I was looking for the picture of me with uh, that my friend took. I can't find. I have to show it in another one, but. I'm in my Boy Scout uniform and uh, we're at the fair and I'm trying to uh, hold up, you know, posing that I'm holding up the unister in my hand in the background. And we didn't quite match up the angles, but uh, we, we had fun with it. So you could do that right now, Bill, just by say that. <laughs> going off to the side. <laughs> Let me see if I can find this one picture here. Hang on a second. Let me just get a kick out of this. One second here. Any of you can go look at it if you're interested at all. It's just go to eBay and type in Annette Teenage Wedding and like so was it a single Tom or is it on an album or, or what? 45. Yeah, it's a 45 single with the pic the picture sleeve is what's valuable. Yeah. Um you can buy just the record for probably five dollars. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, the variations, and Tom has quite a few uh, variations of. Uh, oh, it drives me nuts. <laughs> well, any any picture of Annette is worth looking at. You know, I uh, when I was still flying, uh, I, somehow in, in conversation, my crew found out that I liked Annette Funicello. So the next trip, they brought me this eight by ten sign. I don't know if it's you know real or not, but of Annette. You know, with her uh, bouffant hairdo, probably like from the beach party era. So I taped it above the jump seat at the door, you know, where passengers were boarding. And um, everybody came out and said, is that your mother? <laughs> <laughs> I oh. wish. <laughs> well, today she'd be, about, she'd be about 80 years old today. <laughs> yeah. 80. Yeah, she was she was a delight. Her uh, brother was on a bowling league at the studio that I subbed on. And uh, uh, she you met her. Watch him. Oh yeah, a number of times. She would come down to watch uh, Mike bowl, but then you know so many people would come up and you know start hassling her—not hassling, but you know asking her for autographs and that sort of thing. That 
you know, after a while she would, uh, you know, just uh, say, well, I got to go. But she was always super, super pleasant to uh, speak to. She was Did you hear the... Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say, there was, there was a story about him uh, getting her phone number. I guess she had her own own phone, and he would sell it to his classmates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that went over real well at home. <laughs> I'm just looking through. I'm trying to find really quick. I had somewhere in the picture of me uh, uh, at the Unisphere and also me with Robert Moses. So let's look into that. God, I, I got way too many pictures on my computer. <laughs> you got a picture of Robert Moses actually smiling? Uh, yeah, I, I do. And I, I, I joke with people. I said, I think he was actually had gas. So <laughs> <laughs> when I see a miserable picture of him, says, that is his smile. <laughs> Yeah, that's his resting face. <laughs> he was an interesting individual. There's no doubt whatsoever about that. So, so Bill, you actually met him? No, uh, I took a picture. Uh, I'm looking for it. I know I have it somewhere here. I took a picture of me, uh, my scoutmaster, shaking hands when uh, he was giving me some award for something. And I took it and I changed it to uh, uh, me shaking hands with Robert Moses. And I, it's funny the things that happened. I posted it online someplace, and I put down something like Robert Moses thanking me when I uh, for my idea of, of, uh, that became the Unisphere. And people, wow, <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's uh, that twelve year old, uh, what you call it, uh, you know, kid. He really came up with the idea for the thing. So, uh, the, I, I, and it was my one of my first efforts at uh, Photoshop of cutting and pasting and sticking the stuff uh, together. It was it was fun. Anyway, I'll have to find it for another time. So that's uh, you know you know where it is, but where is it? It's you know the, the trouble you search and you think you'd have it like Bill shaking hands with Robert Moses. So you put in Bill Robert Moses and it brings up something else. So. I, I I have a, I just you know flipping through a, a, when I was doing it I said man I have way too many pictures of car accidents. So. <laughs> I think I think we see those quite often on uh, Facebook. Yeah, it's uh you know I try to use those as a recruiting age uh, to try to get people to come out and uh, you know uh, you know what I what I enjoy about the LAPD patrol uh, and most people probably know what you know I do is I volunteer with the LAPD that every day is different you know so uh, most of the days you know uh, when you know you're at work you're usually doing the same sort of stuff day after day and this particular day every day is different so and one day you get a call that somebody's run over like a week ago somebody took out a fire hydrant and they couldn't get it turned off for 45 minutes because the valves were stuck and they weren't able to make them work and everything so for 45 minutes and i was lucky i was near the fire hydrant and i was getting nice and wet so i was cool my poor partner was a block away and she was burning but you know you take care of that and then yesterday we had to take care of somebody who was impersonating a police officer and we caught him and got that taken care of so you know every day you think you've had one come along and you say like oh i've seen everything and then life says yeah hold my beer you know but, <laughs> and i enjoy it you know it's, it's also uh you know right now the lapd is so thinly staffed they can't respond to an awful lot of accidents unless there's serious injuries and i go to them and i try to take people who are having a really crappy day and make it a little less crappy you know and help them out with the insurance stuff and keep them from getting ripped off by tow truck drivers and everything and i just keep thinking you know i'm, I'm getting up there in years uh you know sooner or later i hope somebody comes up and keeps me from doing what some of these people are about to do and you know it, 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 it I, and carol's very understanding she you know says goodbye and we try to meet up for lunch like yesterday we met up for lunch in the middle of the patrol that sort of thing so uh we try to work it out but she'll know how it is we'll just order and you just you know you're eating and you lift it up to the, the, the and then goes off for a radio call that somebody's flipped a car and you know so we've gotten very good at eating very fast <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah i i enjoyed it. it's great fun well there's another one that somebody posted here what's this big long one uh, Beth, uh, oh, you, you you put the eBay thing of uh, Annette in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
Well, someday I'll sell off my records, Tom, and when I do, I'll let you know uh, what I've got. And as long as you don't bust me for having all the file copies, uh, <laughs> maybe I can fill in some some holes that you have. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> do you have the uh, the Disney record catalog? No. I have to look for that. I, I've got online a list of all the records that they did and which ones were 78s and which ones were 45s and that sort of thing. I'll, I'll have to see where I, I, I have that stuff. Yeah, you know, uh, Bill Morgan has an online site called Disneyland Records. Uh, right. And that even Randy uh, Thornton said that that's his best resource for cataloging but yeah i thought you meant a physical catalog is that yeah, what you mean? it's a, it's a yeah a, it's a paper book that the, it was in a yeah. publication oh yeah yeah no i don't have it no nope. i've oh. i've seen it but i, I don't have it I that was cool for a lot of money too yeah yeah i think i know where it, well i can make as many as i want <laughs> <No>. <laughs> i uh i have a whole bunch of things well, like disney did a thing called the old picture book and it's it was a list of every picture done by production number and there's all sorts of stuff in there that nobody ever remembers because there were all things about meteorological training and gun site gaming and stuff over all the World War II films but it, it's kind of interesting it has what year it came out what year it was reissued and you know some all, all sorts of other neat notes in it so well, and then things keep getting, getting discovered that they would find some movie they never remember they made you know this back Dave Smith did it when he was there and so I've got about six different editions of the old picture book. So hmm. all stuff to deal with. So again, uh, appreciate folks joining next week. I hope, Wayne, that the cactus behind you survives in your heat wave. We've been reading all the terrible stuff about them collapsing. Uh, actually, the uh, big arm on the bottom right uh, broke off this winter during a windstorm. But uh, the rest of it is still there. And I hope if it falls, it falls away from the house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So is that your backyard? Yeah. Wow. That, that's that's yes. a waro has to be a couple hundred years old. Because I understand they don't even grow in a first arm though they reach 75 years old. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, it's uh, it's an extreme wide angle shot. The cactus is actually considerably taller than my two story house. Wow! Oh. Well, I, how, come, I how come there's no buildings behind you? <laughs> it's a uh, utility right of way, uh, which oh. um, somehow Photoshop uh, didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> What what town are you in in Arizona? Sarita, Sarita. south of Tucson. Oh, you're down toward Mexico. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wait. Yeah, down where the interstate uh, mileage is kilometers. Really? Oh. Yep. Oh, Randy, get your hand. Yep. Sorry, just before, we, before we wrap up, um, oh shoot, what was I going to say now? Oh, what camera are you expecting? Talked about a new camera. Oh, uh, for the for the scanner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is a two K scanner, uh, and the new camera is a four K one, but it has much greater uh, density uh, 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 range. Basically, I really, really like the scanner, but it's got a couple of shortcomings. One is that the uh, uh, lighting element is a grid. It, it's not a grid. It's a disk of seven LEDs on a, a, a heat sink. And uh, when you're trying to take really dark film, it will do what we see in the pictures where it's not totally even in the, uh, the way it disperses light. So it goes up through the seven LEDs and it goes through a glass diffuser, but even there, it's not entirely even. The new lighting element comes with 81 different uh, uh, LEDs, so much smaller. It's a square grid that fills the entire area as opposed to the circle that now has to, you know, because obviously the film is rectangular, this uh, lighting element is round and that causes unevenness at the end. The new one is, uh, and I've seen samples that people posted of, of the new one, and the, the new camera is 4K and it also, this camera connects via USB port into the computer. The new one connects via a, a, a Ethernet port into the computer. 
So there's a much higher transfer rate and you can do much greater uncompressed scans of it. So I've had it on order since November. The guy is running really, really late, but uh, pieces, see people are now starting to get their orders and posting their footage. I, I sent one of my pictures before I bought the kit from the guy. I said, okay, uh, you know, I've already spent X thousands of dollars on a scanner. Do I want the upgrade? And I went to somebody that just bought the upgrade, sent him one of my films, compared his film to my film on the same physical scanner, but with the new light source, the new camera, and said, must have. So mm. uh, uh, really it's that good. Huh? Huge, it, huge, huge difference. So yeah. Also, Bill, you had mentioned in the email you sent with the link to this meeting, uh, was there supposed to be a hemisphere film? I, yes, I, I didn't get that finished in time. I, I was working on it. And okay. uh, when I went out yesterday for the day, I left the uh, uh, computer doing the post processing and I got home. And I, 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 uh, this just thank you, we all call, thank Bill Gates for this. It decided during the day it much rather would update my Windows uh, version than finish what it was doing. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, sitting here unattended, doing what it was supposed to be doing. And, you know, I guess it says, you know, getting an update, cancel, you know, hit any key to cancel, hit any key to cancel. I was out, it updated, and I got three quarters of the way through the, uh, the film, and I didn't have time to, to get it done. So the next time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of fun footage, you know, uh, how long does it run? Let me see if I can find that real quick. You know, what's really interesting is you could re definitely see how... Uh, uh, stuff like uh, home video, uh, home movies were dropping off over the years. That in '64, '65, everybody was taking, uh, you know, home movies. Uh, in Expo '67, a lot of people took home movies. Hardly anything shows up from Hemisphere. Uh, hardly, I think I've got one reel from uh, Spokane '74. I've never had anything show up from uh, uh, Expo '86. You know, so. Uh, you know, it was def definitely becoming a. Uh, yeah, I think I think by Expo '86, you know, home movies were on their last leg. Yeah, uh, there probably because the attendance was so much smaller than uh, New York or Montreal. You know, a fraction of the attendance. Yeah, let's see. Uh, look up for the hemisphere on here. One second. Yeah, it's just it was a, a huge drop off, you know, um, you know, because pictures show up from Hemisphere, uh, but not a lot of, uh, you know, uh, video. I mean, I mean, no, I, like I said, I think uh, maybe two. It's, it's, it's... Yeah, it's strange because video taping didn't really become popular until the early '80s. So you have a, a ten year break with no real media then. Yeah, you know what. Sad today is everybody taking all the videos and everything they're taking. Uh, that's great, but you know most people aren't going to be selling <laughs> videos, you know, online or anything. They're just going to go away. You know, uh, dad's going to die. Uh, somebody's going to, uh, you know, uh, you know, delete his hard drive or anything else, and and so much stuff's just going to be gone. All the pictures and everything else. So as an amateur uh, historian, I, I really, you know, th there's going to be giant pockets of time that are just uh not there yeah the hemisphere reel runs uh three minutes and 30 seconds let me just look at it real quick here is, is it worth showing it starts with a monkey begging for money so if you want it guys want to see it and it's not restored i can uh, we can do sure. that okay let's bring yeah. it back here to the beginning It'll be fun to see one pre-processing. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you get to see it again later on after it's done. We can do the now and then. So, without great further ado, here comes Hemisphere sixty-eight. Monkey. This is in uh, Dallas. San Antonio. San Antonio. Too. Right. This is a uh, Super Eight movie. Mm -hmm. There are a few buildings left of this on the fairground site. Not too many, though. They pretty much redeveloped the whole thing. There's our Los Voladores again. You can also see, by the way, there's a hair down in the bottom gate, you know, that unfortunately the guy didn't clean his camera before he took it. So we're going to see that bit of schmutz there the entire time. Yeah, you can see him pressing that with his feet. Yep. Yeah. So his seat must swivel. 
Yep. Spinning it around. What keeps them from falling off? <laughs> Practice. Crazy glue. <laughs> So, okay, so when I process this, it will stabilize it so it won't have all the little shaking and everything. And uh, hopefully, you know, take some of the dark areas, bring them back. The, the color on this one held up uh, fairly well, so it won't have to do a lot. Riding on the mini rail. Water ski show going on down there. Boat ride going around. Base of the Tower of the Americas, real quick. U.S. Pavilion in the back. Courthouse, huh? Yep. Must have a Skyway to have a World's Fair. Yeah, we were there a couple of years ago and enjoyed it. Went up to the top of the tower and uh, uh, they were having some high winds that uh, they were saying, you know, the week before the tower had been closed because of uh, winds. So we were glad that when we were there, we were able to go. Yeah, you could eat lunch up there. Yep. What are those tall buildings in the back, you know? Uh, I don't know what buildings they were, sorry. They're still there, but I can't remember what they were at this point. There's some historical buildings that were left on the site and uh, uh, some of them are being repurposed today for community organizations and that. But I don't know what the uh, the larger ones in the background there were. Like there, there's one of the, that was the humble house. Hey, Bob, uh -huh. Bob, let's go see him. Los Adora stage. I'll take it from the monorail. Everybody lining up for the show. So anyway, that's what Bill Gates kept us from seeing in Restored uh, Glory. So, Darren, I have, uh, one of my workbench recover for a client. No backups, everything the family saved. Yeah, there's a neighbor of mine down the street, uh, really nice uh, people that came to me and said his computer died and uh, he had his daughter's uh, you know, wedding pictures on it. Do you have any copies? No. I went down and uh, restored it. You know, I was able to get it going and everything. And I said, man, this hard drive is restored, is dying. You need to get this thing fixed. And I went and uh, told him, I said, you know, you were very, very lucky I could get it fixed this time, but you got to go and buy like an external hard drive. First of all, you need to get a new computer. It was Windows, uh, not, yeah, I think he was running Windows 311 or something. Still, so anyway, go, go get a new computer and go get a hard drive. If nothing else, get a, a CD burner and burn copies of this stuff. So I begged him to do it. Two weeks later, he called me up. Computer died. Uh, well, you have the backup. Oh, no, that was $135, and I didn't know if I wanted to spend it. So I, I went down, and I got it going this time, and I said, this is it. Time out. I am never doing this again. And I lied to him. I said it can't be done again. So you need to go and buy a new computer and you know get this stuff saved. And he did, you know, but you know, you're thinking that that's your only copy of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And my uh, uh, college roommate lives in it, uh, Austin. He got one of those viruses, just encrypted his hard drive. And I had talked him into doing a hard drive, but he had forgotten the step of unplugging the hard drive when you back it up. Mm -hmm. So it went carefully encrypted his hard drive and his backup drive so i tell everybody you know uh, uh you know use a service like carbonite which copies everything out of your physical house to the cloud automatically so if god forbid your house burns down and you know you can do it but before i forget how many people here have a dash cam i have a thing to buy one i don't know how useful they are <laughs> oh, I, 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 I tell you, I, I got to tell you the story real quick before we go. You must get a dash can. You absolutely must. My friend Mike Clark, uh, he was, he has one in his car. He's had it for a number of years. About 
less than a month ago, Mike left his house and he got less than a mile from his house and he was going down a, a road that has uh, here in LA, but it has a, a divider in the middle, back when he said that the, the you know, rail car is riding around. And he's going uh, westbound, a motorcyclist is going eastbound, goes into the uh, center where there's a U-turn thing and pulls right in front of Mike. Oh, Never wow. stopped. You can see it on the video. The guy came down and the video shows that the guy was looking straight ahead. He was trying to get into his driveway. He never looked at Mike's direction. It was in the helmet. You can see the profile, his face, everything. Mike hit him dead on. I mean, really hard to the point where it totaled Mike's car. The guy they didn't think was going to live, and now they think he may be a vegetable the rest of his life. Nice. Mike had the video that clearly showed he was going down the street, you know, and he's going like 30 in a 35 zone. He's not changing lanes, doing anything stupid. Uh, and it showed that the motorcycle guy hit him. Well, if the guy had died, Mike could have been looking at vehicular manslaughter charges, totally not his own fault. Uh, the guy's family could be suing everything. Now he shows the video of the police that go, you're off scot-free. He showed it to the guy's insurance company, and they said, yeah, it was obvious that our client's fault. How do we, what, what do we do to replace your car? And he just picked up his new car this week. Oh. Hmm. All because he had a $150 or so dash cam in his car. I've got one in my car. Carol's got one in her car. Uh, the one I use is called a Rove, R-O-V-E. It's a 4K camera. It costs about $90 on Amazon. It can make all the difference in the world for an, an insurance claim. Like I said, you could have somebody suing you for everything you own because you took out their loved one for $100. I'm just begging everybody because I go to probably 10, 12 accidents a week. And it's always he said, she said, he pulled out in front of me, she cut me off. And I said, I can't, I wasn't there. I can't tell you who did it. You know, we'll look for witnesses. We'll look for cameras that are in the area to try to back up your story. The view of a dash cam. And if you do something stupid, you just say, I forgot to record that day. Sorry. You know, but I mean, please, everybody, I beg you, go and get a dash cam. If, if there's anything you get out of these Saturday talks, the way people drive these days, you, you need to have one. So. Uh, two weeks from now when we're back, I hope I ask how many people have a dash cam and everybody puts up their hand. So, you, you, where you does know, it? Where was it record that video to? What's that? Where does it store the video? On the dash cam, they're really neat. Uh, they're they're small devices like mine is yay big. It goes up on the windshield up near the rearview mirror. Uh, mine has a 32 gigabyte card in it, and it just re uh, goes on a, a cycle. When it gets full, it takes the oldest video and deletes the oldest video and records a new one and just goes like that. So when Mike had his issue, he you know, just popped the 32 gig card out of his, downloaded the computer, and you can watch it. So uh, uh, it, again, it's it, the when, and you can get all sorts of options. Uh, the one I have, uh, you have an option. Do you want to record all of your telemetry data on the video? So on mine, it, it records that I'm going 33 miles an hour and it's this time of day and everything. You can have it where it records that just in a data file so it, you know, it doesn't show on your video. You can record sound or no sound. You can do all sorts of stuff. Just plugs into the cigarette lighter in the car. If you want to, it comes with a kit to hardwire it in. Uh, but for me, I just plug it in. And when I uh, go on a trip, and uh, I just take it out of the car. It's got a suction cup that I can go to a rental car, plug it into the rental car, and, and just continue there. It's, it's, how, it's, how long of a video will it store at 32 gigs? 32 gigs stores about 12 hours or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, it's 4K resolution, so it's, it's it's very high quality. But it's probably more than 12 hours. It's, it's when, you, when you park when you park your car, do you worry about a theft, or do you take no, it out? No, I, I you know when I first got it, I took it out and I put it back and took it out and put it out. And I, I, one of the things I realized uh, from the LAPD work is I've never had to take a report of a stolen webcam. So that's not what they're stealing. They're stealing everything else. But, I, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I, I take a lot of reports of stolen stuff and never a webcam. It's, sometimes I would realize it's in the trunk. I forgot to take it out. And I'd be paranoid. That's when I'm going to get hit, you know. But it, it just, it, it's, it's very small. Carol's is... Uh, a little one about the eight big up there. It does. They did do a really great job. And like I said, I have it where it records the sound on it. So if God forbid I ever get in an accident, I can say I wasn't distracted. I wasn't on the telephone. I wasn't you know screaming at the kid in the back seat or anything like that. You know, 
because I, I posted one of uh, something that happened. Uh, somebody cut me off and he said, there's never a cop around when you need it. Well, it turned out there was a cop behind me and he pulled the guy over to cut me off. And I posted it online and one of my friends was like, oh, I can't believe you're listening to ABBA. You know? <laughs> <laughs> See, my, my cigarette lighter is a full-time use guy with a Garmin GPS plugged into it. Well, you don't have to. The, the plug I have in my G, uh, cigarette lighter is uh, got two outlets in it. One goes to the GPS and one goes to the, uh, 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 what did I have? Well, this card has the uh, uh, GPS built into it. Uh, it's other cards. You can get them with two, three uh, adapters that plug into. Oh, the other one I, I charge the iPod with. So, um, you know, I just have the, uh, you know, adapters plugged in there. You know, it, they work really well. How many people have cigarette lighters in their car? Almost everybody does still these days because they're now auxiliary power outlets. Exactly. You're hidden in your center console, so they're not actually a cigarette lighter. But yeah, I, mean, I have all that. Yeah, okay. I thought you meant like a physical. Yeah, you want to have a lighter. Cigarette. Almost every car still comes with a 12 volt cigarette outlet for people plugging in accessories. So your model is called a Robe, R O B E? R O V E, yeah. E B, like Robe. -E, like you're roving around. Like okay. Rover the dog. A Rove, R O V E. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Romeo Osco, uh, Victor Echo. <laughs> well, that's good advice for somebody that works with the police. <laughs> I, I tell you, it, it it makes all the difference in the world. It it really really does. In Mike's case, uh, you know, uh, it. I mean, you watch the video. It, it's it's really horrific to watch. And then the guy's thrown out on the street and knocked his helmet off, tore his shoes off. I mean, he, I mean, and it's Mike and others out there working on the camera just keeps recording. But uh, it made all the difference in the world. I mean, they didn't think the guy was going to live. And now, like I said, he's likely to be a vegetable. But if you're rear-ended or, if, if rear or broadside, it's not going to do you any good. Yeah, it, it will hurt because, for example, a, a friend of ours, uh, he has a Tesla and it, it records everything in the Tesla. But he's driving along and all of a sudden, pow, the car goes uh, you know, sideways. He was able to show that he had a green light. He drove along. He went through the green light. And now he gets thrown off to the side. His Tesla was destroyed. But he was able to show I had a green light. The guy that hit me broadsided me oh, with dude. a red light. So, again, he had zero liability. There are ones like my robe actually comes with a kit to put a, a camera in the back window. I can't do that because I have a convertible and that makes too much trouble with the uh, cables and everything. But they also will have sensor. If you hardwire it in, they have a sensor, so if somebody bangs you in a parking lot, it could be recording constantly, you know, for like 30 seconds, 30 seconds. And if it bangs, it will lock that video in. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of options. But and it comes with it comes with the memory card, too? Uh, some of them do, some of them don't. Some you got to buy a memory card. But oh, they're cheap. They're cheap, you know, uh, sort of thing. They're not very expensive. Yeah. Is it physically mounted to your car, or do you have, is it just a uh, suction cup? I I have both. Uh, 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 Carol is. I've got to put the permanent mount in her car because with the heat, it keeps every now and then she'll be driving along and the camera drops down. I put it in there with a suction cup when I was testing it because we had an older model that wore out the heat after a while. Uh, after about four years, it's causing some issues with the internal battery. So I put a different one in her car, and then in uh, my car, the suction. She's got a slightly different model. The robe has never come loose on me. And the suction cup is so hard, it's like, get out of here, you bastard. It, it's just amazing. But it just, it's right, right up near the rearview mirror. You want to try to put it so you can kind of see it from the driver's side to make sure that it, it is recording, that it hasn't gotten a memory card corruption issue or anything. But you want to put it in some place where it's not distracting, that you're going, oh, look at that. That's a pretty picture. Ow, you hit somebody. Mm -hmm. And by the way, your mileage may vary. Your state may have some rules on where you can put them and how you would fash them or whatever. I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one on television. So, but uh, really, I, I tell you, I, I go to so many accidents where it's he said, she said, I mean, 90% of them. And other people, hey, I'm not worried. I got it all on video. You know, it's uh, it, it makes all the difference. And for Mike, it could have been a life changer for him. So, uh, you know, I, and, and I, I, I have to get the, I've got the video he sent me, and uh, I've been trying to convince him to put it up online. Like I said, it, it's it's he's minding his own business. He's just driving along, and pow, this guy comes literally out of nowhere. But you can yeah. see the stop sign. 
the guy come up and he goes right through it as Mike was passing it. So and it picks up the audio as well. Again, it's up to you. Some people, like a friend of mine, I recommended that she has her video turned off because she doesn't want anybody, uh, you know, uh, getting access to what she may be saying or whatever. You know, totally up to you if you, uh, you know, turn the audio on, turn it off. I, I have it on, but, you know, nothing particular to hide. But if I, you know, if I do get so on, you, access, so if you mount this, if you mount this thing up by your rear view mirror, you have to have a cable hanging down across your dashboard. They give you a little tool that you can take it and you can wedge it in between the edge of the car liner, uh, you know, and around the side, down the sides of the car. I do just have it hanging down a little because again, I do take it out of the car when I get to a rental or something, I'll, I'll put it in the other car. But yeah, the cable does hang down on mine. They give you a little clip. And you just basically, you know, clip it up here, clip it down there and, and run out of the way. So it's, it's why, not, why don't you sit it just on top of your dashboard? Um, I guess you could, um, you know, I mean, it, it's meant the, the way they're mounted is to made to look forward. So, uh, I, uh, the, the the mount is in front of it and it hangs down underneath it. I guess I could put it on the dashboard, but then everything be upside down, which I can fix. So it, it's been just made to go on the windshield. And it gets pretty close to 180 degree. Uh, uh, Beth is saying it's illegal to install them on the windshield. Yeah, the, it gets close to 180 degree angle. So it does a really good job of seeing people coming across you know, streets. Or, where can you mount them in uh, Georgia, uh, Beth? Looks like either on the dashboard or maybe behind the rear view mirror. Yeah, on the back side, yeah. I guess, of the rear. Yeah, I mean, they do have some restrictions here in uh, in California. You just can't put it like in front of you. It's got to be up to the corner or you know, uh, you know, near your rear view mirror, so that uh, you know they they don't get the. You know, Bill. Last time I rented a car, they were really pushing to go for. Uh, renting along with it a, a dash cam really you know what's amazing is when you see the price they charge you for stuff like uh you know renting a uh you know, turning a serious xm for the the day or renting a uh uh you know uh what you call it a gps for the thing it, it's just uh just astonishing what they hit you for well yeah i'm sure that yeah i'm sure that the uh yeah the sales agents are told yeah you know, try to sell up to a you know a dash cam or you know whatever i was just looking to see if i had any pictures because i've erased most of them over time you know I'll, I'll post online about somebody doing something stupid but i don't think i need to save it forever i'm just looking to see if i had any dash cam clips that are sitting here and i, I don't see any in, in the usual places put it that way uh, but again it's it, it does really nice night vision view at the uh, at you know as you drive along at night uh, the nice thing with a 4K is if somebody hits you and they drive off, you can usually pick up their uh, uh, license plate information and turn it in for a uh, you know a hit and run uh, charge, uh, you know which you know, hopefully have uninsured motorist charge in case somebody hits you. But it's, it is a lot more satisfying to be able to say the guy that hit me was uh, you know his license plate was XBC and you know, whatever as opposed to I don't know. Yeah, next time maybe I'll just take some footage of driving around or whatever. But uh, again, they are really, really, uh, uh, you know, a super way to do it. So, well, I hope folks have a good weekend. Next week we'll be somewhere, I think on Saturday, we may be at Whidbey Island or someplace else in uh, Seattle and go to enjoy it. And then in two weeks, I uh, plan to have uh, more movies. Uh, again, uh, I will try to finish restoring the hemisphere. I have a ton of uh, 64 World's Fair stuff that uh, has uh, come in. And uh, I'm just looking at films to the left of me, films to the right of me. And I, it's, it, it's a disease. <laughs> <laughs> You know, hey, I, 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 like I've mentioned before, I enjoy it. I'm doing this stuff and, you know, uh, working on it and everything. It takes your mind off the day-to-day -day stuff. And, you know, like the, the terrible stuff the poor people are going through in uh, Hawaii right now. You know, oh, just yeah. uh, god-awful. Carol and I went there. When I left Warner Brothers and uh, uh, before Warner's, I left Disney before I went to Warner Brothers. We went to Maui and went to Lahaina and, you know, had a really nice time and memories and 
you just look at it now and it's just uh, horrific to see what's happened. So encourage people to make donations if you can to the uh, various relief funds. Uh, CNN on their website has a, a link that you can go to and uh, make a donation there. So um, yeah, it's, it's just, I, I can't believe an entire town is gone. You know, yeah. I, I've had to evacuate neighborhoods. And I've seen an entire street gone, but I've never seen an entire town. So it, it's just uh, mind boggling to me. Yeah, you know, how you rebuild and how you recover from that. It's, uh, wow. Just, just too much. Our family was there for Christmas and the condo behind us caught on fire and, and the wind just took it out almost immediately. You know, I'm talking about in Lahaina, you know, right. so it's a big condo project in it just, and it was lucky the wind was blowing, you know, out to sea or, you know, it would have happened back then because yeah, it's just that when that, it's like that fire in Louisville, Colorado, you know, that um, just a, a spark, but when you get these big winds, man, it just fans the flames horribly, so. It was a perfect combination of things going wrong from the drought and the dry conditions and then the wind from that distant hurricane. Yes. And yep. those poor people had nowhere to go. I mean, you know, uh, here we have to evacuate a neighborhood. There's usually X number of roads out and we don't get people trapped in their cars. We do get people, I don't want to leave. I can't make you leave. But there, all those people that were, you know, stuck on the road along the highway and they had to jump into the ocean to survive. That's, yes. Yeah. That's, yes. One of the, that's one of the big things about Maui is um, getting around the island is very difficult. When I was still flying, more I never laid over there, but more than once, the pilots, there was an accident on the main road or a fire or a landslide. They had to bring them in by helicopter or boat. Right. Island. Yeah, because that was the only way to get there. A friend of mine that I used to work with, flight attendant, his brother got out. He was in, in line, lived in line, and he got on his boat and just sailed out to sea. And my friend Darren couldn't get a hold of him for about three days, two days, whatever. Finally heard from him. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, it wiped that marina right off the face of the earth. Yeah, yeah. the communication towers got burned down too. So it's, yeah, I made it really hard to reach people. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. On Thursday, I was on a call with the uh, Public Utilities Commission for the state of California. Uh, they, they they regulate all sorts of things, and one of the things they were uh, uh, they had three things in the agenda they were talking about, and one of them was self driving cars. Uh, that uh, that in San Francisco they've had two companies doing pilot drives of, of cars that have caused all sorts of problems with the San Francisco Fire Department, and uh, they uh, the fire department doesn't want oh. them to park on their hoses and they just bang into things. But they, the Public Utilities Commission decided to let them uh, do that. Another one was uh, they were uh, evidently uh, AT&T has uh, filed to abandon copper lines in the state of California, and they just want to go with cell phone service. And a whole bunch of people, myself included, were saying, hey, when well, we've had fires, floods, earthquakes and everything, the cell phones all either lose power, the towers fall down, and they get absolutely swamped. But the copper line, you can still call 911 on. So I, I take a lot of ribbing from people that, you know, I'm looking at my phone over here that I'm paying $113 a month for for a copper line. Uh, it's my alarm system, uh, which can't be taken offline by uh, Wi Fi jammers, which uh, people do use. And uh, when we have had, had power failures and everything, uh, the phone keeps working. So, but now the Public Utility Commission says, oh, that's okay. So it's a, uh, that would be a big mistake. When I was in New York on 9-11, on a layover, um, our cell phones were useless. Yeah. And trying to find a, a, you know, old pay phone, you know, they were, a lot of them were gone. There were still a few of them around, but um, the lines were a block long to use them. And what kind of saved me getting a hold of my family back in California was... Um, I taken a tour the previous layover. I taken a tour of the main library there by Bryant Park, and they had pointed out that the Dozen had pointed out these uh, hand carved wooden telephone booths on the third floor. So I went over. I didn't even know if the library would be open, but I went over there and 
it was still open and went up to the third floor and I was the only one up there. Wow. I was a phone call from there. I mean, otherwise my family would not have heard from me for another you know, two or three days. We had the 94 earthquake, the uh, cells, uh, Sutton Towers just went out of service, you know, like instantly. Uh, and I saw the copper lines, so I was able to, uh, and it was it was interesting. We had an next door neighbor, we, uh, the lady that lived behind us, we didn't get along with too well at the time. And uh, all of a sudden, when she found out I had a working telephone, she became my best friend. You know, <laughs> then of course, when the earthquake was over, she reverted to her normal self, but you know, uh, and I, I would have all sorts of people just line up at my front door to use their phone, you know, and yeah, call your relatives, tell them you're alive, that, that sort of thing. So and it was interesting. Oh. I had uh, three numbers in the house at the time because a uh, business line, fax line, and home line. And one of the uh, two of the lines went out of service because uh, the uh, 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 earthquake started a fire and the fire burned out a telephone pole. The, uh, and I live in an area with underground utilities, but the wires still have to come over the air before they go underground and two of my lines came in on one and then the other line came in on another one and so two of them went out when the pole burned down but i still had the one working line so uh it, 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 like i said I, I i keep it uh I, you know i'd rather not pay for it in the phone company you know the cable company oh we'll keep giving you uh you know cable service uh, you know phone service well, the number of times I turn it on, there's no cable and no internet or, you know, whatever. God forbid you need to call 911. So mm -hmm. I'm going to sound between my love of copper lines and dash cams and everything. I'm going to sound like I'm a paranoid freak. But <laughs> <laughs> I do believe in uh, the ounce of prevention. Prepare, okay. yeah. Preparedness. It's, a, it's the Boy Scout in you. It probably I just is. showed the hemisphere film because I was going to ask for a refund on my admission if I hadn't seen that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, well, I, I'll give you back 50% of what you paid. <laughs> hey, Bill, before you sign off, do you have anything more about uh, Glenn Barker? And have you talked to Sandy? And uh... no, I haven't talked to her. Uh, yeah, that. Uh, I think folks might might know uh, Glenn Barker from uh, Imagineering was a frequent participant on these calls. He okay. died suddenly about three weeks ago, and uh, you know we can mention it on the one call right after that. It was just a, a real shock. Uh, Glenn and I had been talking. Glenn only lived about maybe 10, 12 miles from me, and we kept talking. We'd get together at a retiree lunches and that, and I kept talking to him about you got to digitize your family stuff while you still got a chance, you know, your, your family photos. He had movies and really great stuff of, you know, building uh, Disney World and Epcot stuff, you know, you know, trying to get them to do. And yeah, we got to get together. So I said, okay, I'm going to be gone for two weeks. So I was supposed to be going to New York for a trip. As soon as I get back, yeah, okay, we'll have lunch that week and then get the word he passed away. So uh, I don't know what it was. He, he uh, it did yeah, you know, like I, said, I spoke to him about uh, probably about nine days before I got the word he was gone, and he was doing great. So it was very sudden, uh, whatever, uh, whatever it be. Oh yeah, it was it was his heart, um, and I I I was just curious. It, it sounds to me like he was at Disneyland with uh, his granddaughter's ninth birthday, and got off a ride and told Sandy everything sounds great on you know on the right and then collapsed is that's what that's what i got from it but I, that's what i was going to ask you to verify to see if that's what actually happened but but when well, oh, i would think sandy would be very anxious to talk to you about you know trying to organize and you know get glenn's stuff digitized and all like she's you have to reach out to her i haven't wanted yeah. to know bother people when they go through something like that we have our next retiree luncheon on wednesday this this, this week and i was you know planning and talking to some of the people there to try to get some yeah. more information bill you wouldn't you wouldn't be bothering her she would love to hear from you i promise oh, okay I'll, uh, I'll, I'll i'll reach out to her you know uh yeah uh, i guess if you're gonna go that I, I i figured it was a heart attack you know something yeah that fast and everything but he always seemed in you know great shape and everything. You know, it's uh, I guess just, it just happens. He had congenitive heart disease, so yeah, AFib, um, 
yeah, issues and yeah. So okay, and then and then two Glenn or uh, sorry, Jim Corcus also yeah, passed away last week. That he, he and I were you know kind of casual friends. We'd been out to breakfast and lunch and stuff uh, when he lived in Florida and. Yeah, for folks that don't know, Jim was a uh, big a Disney historian. I mentioned the uh, Hollywood Film Enterprises. He had actually made a post in uh, about 2020 about the Hollywood Film Enterprises and it had a partial list. So then I made a longer list for him, put that there. And the trouble is now every time I search for something, it keeps, keeps bringing me back to that post. But I was working on finishing this updated thing you know, to add to that post and then got the word that Jim died. He had uh, colon cancer and uh, really uh, it was another loss. He, he kept trying to fight it, but uh, by the time he found out about it, it was it was too late. Yeah, it was limp, through his limb system and his whole body just... Yeah, and he wasn't even in there for that. It, he went in yeah, for something else. He wasn't feeling great and and then they said you you he had all these problems it was like five different things uh wrong with him and but yeah that anyway yeah also very sad yeah uh, you know you see these things happen and you go uh, i don't know if being a disney historian is a good uh, thing these days uh, somebody has it in for us yeah so i'm planning hanging around not. tom i hope you do too what's that I said, I'm planning and hanging around. I, I hope you oh. are too. Well, we'll see. I I had a Widowmaker heart attack a few years ago, so I shouldn't be here. Oh, know, wow. Only something like 1% of people survive that. I'm like, what? <laughs> Scary stuff. Yeah. Well, it's a happy note to end a day on. <laughs> yeah. Get your oh, life sorry. insurance paid up. It's yeah, just been... Life you haven't been on for a couple of weeks and I've yeah, been dying to ask you, or I shouldn't say dying to ask you, been uh, really wanting to ask you if you knew any more about what happened. But. Yeah, no, I, uh, like I said, I've been, he, 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 I, I, I've always, I don't know, maybe I just don't want to call somebody and hear the bad news, the bad details, but I, you know, tend to like, I, know, I guess mentally block it out in a way. You know, like I said, I, it, I just was, well, I was really looking forward to getting together. And, uh, you know, I, I mentioned I could, you know, loan them a film scanner because uh, I, I have three Nikon uh, full scan scanners. And I, I generally use two of them. I have one just in backup. And I said, you know, I'll bring over, loan you a scanner, teach you how to use it. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, we'll do that. You know, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah, we all think we're going to live forever, right? Well, I know I'm not, and I realized that I had to empty out my uh, uh, parents' house, and I don't want to have you know do to my kids what I had to do there. I had to empty out my brother Jim's house, so I've got to start divesting myself and stuff. And I, I make up my mind; I won't buy anything. I won't do anything. Ooh, that looks really nice, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, my parents too built my. Uh, Dad went to yard sales every Friday and Saturday. That was their thing in retirement. And they never met a yard sale they didn't like. <laughs> Hang on. So it was total trail. Nothing at all like Irv's place. It's so perfect and neat as a pin. I'm not a collector of things. When you look at my closets and my shelves, they're half empty. Where's all your stuff? And I said, I don't collect anything. I don't like clutter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's my daughter. One daughter's that way, and the other one is the opposite. She's collects everything. So, well, collecting is uh, the easy part. It's storing it and getting. Yeah. Like we were talking on the uh, the call the other day, somebody asked, you know, uh, Tom and I were at a different call, and somebody asked about buying stuff at the, uh, you know, uh, Disney. What did you buy when you went to? Uh, oh, here. <laughs> Let me. I, I'm just looking for pictures here. Uh, there's one I want to come up with, but uh, I don't know if I've shown this one. So here, let me. Uh, how, how long will your work last on the cloud after we're all gone? Do you have any idea? Do people see this one? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me yeah, see. That'd, that'd be you, Bill. How well, long will your work last on the cloud? I'm bad, Bill. I'm sorry, how long? What? How long will your work last if you post it on the cloud after we're all gone? Oh. 
What happens to it? It's a good question. Hang on, I'll be right with you. Um, I've been talking to some museums about what to do with some of this stuff, and I've just got to uh, get more serious as far as... Uh, yeah, I know you approach the Library of Congress, too. Yeah. And uh, just look at this other picture here real quick. I may just uh, do what they do in India and have a giant funeral fire. But all your work is on the cloud. It's not just on a hard drive in your house. It, that's right. It is on the cloud. And I have put in my living trust instructions on how I would like to keep it uh, alive and funded and stuff like that. So let me see. I was looking for when I was looking for the picture of me at the World's Fair. I found this other one. I'm just looking for it again, and we should be coming to it. God, I have so many pictures to sort out. I'm getting closer, but it will resonate with all of us that collects. I gotta stop taking pictures of my dog. <laughs> I have a few on my own phone too. Yeah. Um, they're so cute. They are, you know, it's, uh, we're getting, I'm getting closer where I remember seeing it. Of course, it will not be worth anywhere near the amount of buildup that this is uh, taking. <laughs> yeah, Ir Irv, so do you get it that like Facebook and different sites have directives of yes, what that. you want to happen? Like if there's a person that you want to take over your cloud or you know what just what you want to do with all that stuff you you can set that up ahead of time yeah I, I have that done okay here let me enlarge the picture and let me share it and i think we will all get a, a kick out of here share screen we get into your lunch hour here bill <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh yes I think you showed us this once before. <laughs> this be all yours. <laughs> and that's yeah. just the storage shed, not the garage at his house. That's the yeah. garage at his house. Right. I had a storage unit and I got tired of paying for it. So I'll put it in the garage. And we had flooding a, a couple of weeks ago and I've got stuff sorted out and I've got to sell an eBay, sell an eBay, sell an eBay. But I've got trips coming up and you have to start arranging when you sell it on eBay that it ends. Because, you know, if, if it goes for seven days and then you know, somebody buys it, and they still have 10 days to pay for it. You know, you can't be listing anything when you've got a trip coming in 10 days. Or, so I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, uh, you, you just never know. You know, you could have what happened to Glenn happen to you. You could be driving in the street. Somebody comes through a light, takes you out. So uh you know, but I, I do have a thing in there how to keep a uh, world's fair community.org alive and you know that sort of stuff. Yeah, but if you're going to go, that's the way to go. No suffering, no long term care, no nursing homes. Right. You got to be lucky the way you go. It's just yep. like some ice cream in the freezer I'd like to finish first. <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, so see you in two weeks, and I hope everybody does well. Uh, two weeks or next week? What's that? Two, two weeks. weeks or next week? Two weeks. Next week, I'm in Seattle. I can't make it in two weeks. I got the grandkids coming down. Oh, well, then we'll call it off. So okay. we'll <laughs> want, at least you can come on long enough that we they're, can meet them, right? Coming down from Jersey and visiting me down in North Carolina. It's their annual trip down there. Yeah. Well, Irv, jump on so we can meet them. Yeah, just, they're 12 years old already. They're twins. Yeah. Well, I have a great so visit just with them. Jump on so we can meet, meet them and say hello and then go get back to being granddad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 Tom, I won't be on the Thursday call because I'll be on my way to the uh, Burbank Airport. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope you have fun. That, uh, and hope, maybe you can meet up with Rob and see a fun show or something. <laughs> Yeah, Do you plan on going to Seattle Center while you're up in uh, Seattle? We might. We've been there a number of times. So my, my daughter uh, let, always likes to go out there and go and uh, go to the gift shop and hold the pictures of my books and send the pictures to me. I said, you know, I'm glad they're in sale, but I, I hope those aren't the same one, two that you held up, you know, three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she gets a kick. She goes there with friends. And, and, and you know, I'm very proud of her. And I'm, I'm glad she goes there with her friends and tells them, this is my dad's books. This, these are people. Yeah. 
it, it, it's it's endearing. So uh, yeah, I mean, if we go, I've got to go ride the monorail and you know do all you get there's the, the list of stuff we do every time we go. So I don't know if we're gonna go this time. I, I I told him like he went to go on something called the Cascade Loop which I guess is about an eight hour drive. And I said, I would really prefer more of drive for an hour, get out and look at a waterfall or go to some store, you know, some picturesque village and get an ice cream, as opposed to drive eight hours and be looking at things out the far window. I'm much have, have you uh, taken that uh, Seattle underground tour? Oh, um, no, did not. That's, but, that's yeah. fun. I don't, I don't a know if they still have it, but. I, I took it. That was well worthwhile. Yeah, I loved it. What kind of stuff does it cover? It, it, was, it explains why there's an underground, first of all. They know. lifted up the streets one level because of flooding. And they right. have all these abandoned buildings down there, restaurants, stores, lodging. It's it's like a whole different city, just forgotten. Yeah, yeah. It's in they, one of the lots of movies. They have lots of funny jokes, too, so you, you'll love that part, too. <laughs> You know, we'll have to give that a try. And uh, like I said, we're just going up to see them and meet her new dog. And, you know, uh, when she left here, uh, we, we've had uh, her old dog, uh, who I'm looking at right now, uh, you know, here for years. And, uh, you know, we just, Carol, Carol became very attached to the dog. And we convinced Margo that the dog would do better here living with us and our other dog. So uh, Bailey is here at my feet. So Margo just about a month ago got a Bailey clone. You know, Bailey's now eight years old. This other dog's six months old. And uh, Margo had forgotten the fact that when we got Bailey, Bailey wasn't housebroken. And Dad took care of that. So mm -hmm. now the new dog, Max, is not housebroken. So when I get up there, I hope to give her a few points of pointers on, on dealing with that issue. But, oh, uh, boy. Yeah, but it, it is interesting. They're both uh, uh, multi Shih Tzu mixes. They look very similar. And she'll send us a video on the characteristics that they have. Like, you know, they both will grab something and shake it very hard from side to side, which they would do to rats in the real life and break their necks. You know, the two dogs who have never met, they're a thousand miles apart, and they both take the toys and are doing the same thing with them. So it's very interesting how you can see breed uh, characteristics. So... Well, I'm going to go off to lunch, and I hope all are doing well, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks, and we'll see Irv in three weeks. So, yeah, yeah. It's it's a great great camp the Boy Scout right. camp in four weeks. So. <laughs> Have a good time in Seattle. Uh, great, four weeks, I'll be in Myrtle Beach, and we'll see me on either. <laughs> well, have a good trip. Talk to you all in two weeks. Four, three. Thank you. Thanks, right, thanks for everything, guys. Nice talk, Bill.